<sighs> Seriously, when is this war dance going to start? The sky splitter has been hovering there for ages. When can we board and see what's inside? Is this how long life species live? Everything proceeds so slowly. The effectiveness of anticipation in my emotional center is at an all-time high. Oh, I need to drink some coolant. Relax. The Realm Keeping Commission will send boarding notices to all ticket holders. The Gazette said the Sky Splitter will fire a salute before the ceremony starts. I saw the schedule for the first day of the tournament. Can you believe the Ringmaster accepted four challenges? And he's just a kid. So, who are you betting on, Bardo? I'm betting on neither. I lost all my credits betting on Roboball games in Tykean. This time, I've decided not to rely on probability games to accomplish my target of getting rich. War dance. <sighs> Here you are. I heard you and Mr. Don Hung went to meet the judges. And then a riot broke out in the Shackling prison. I was so worried about you. <sighs> Thank goodness you both made it out safe. There was a revolt in the Shackling prison. Fortunately, we were protected by the guards until the Cloud Knights arrived to rescue us. I was planning to take Miss March and Yun Lee to Stargazer Navalia to see the Sky Splitter up close, but we stumbled upon a group of suspicious Foxians carrying official identities. They were acting strange, so out of curiosity, we decided to follow them. It turns out they were actually Boris and disguised as Foxians. It seems they infiltrated Stargazer Navalia in order to prepare for Hule's escape, and we foiled their plans by pure chance. I wonder who provided them with those disguises, and how many more Borison have taken advantage of the war dance to infiltrate the ship. Yeah, I heard them too, but I'm afraid I'll have to disappoint them. I've already reported to General Jing Yuan that I'll give up my role as the Ringmaster. The security of the Lafu is more important to me than anything else. I need to fulfill my duties as a Cloud Knight Lieutenant before taking on the honor of being a Ringmaster. Those tourists just want to see some good sword fights. <laughs> Anyone can participate in this kind of tournament. It doesn't have to be me. The real challenge lies beyond the Ring on the Sky Splitter. If we don't capture the fugitive soon, Hule will wreak havoc. Obviously. There's someone behind the scenes orchestrating this prison break, intending to spread chaos. If we fail to thwart their evil plan, what honor will be left for us to uphold? Well said. You may be tiny in stature, but your ambition matches that of the Yao Qing's warriors. Hey, th this has nothing to do with my height. Yes. I suggested to Yan Qing that we find a place to have a decent meal. A hunter must be well fed before the hunt. You still have a good appetite, even in the face of disaster. You truly are the Merlin's Claw. Please finish the food quickly so we can get to work, General Feishao. Well, that's not up to me. Dig in. I called you here so you could enjoy the food. Me? Uh, this isn't the time for a leisurely meal, and this is way too much for me. <laughs> oh. You'd give me time to enjoy a meal, but not yourself? Ever since you encountered those Boris and spies, you've been so busy that you've hardly eaten anything. You can't defeat Hule on an empty stomach. Take your time. Enjoy the meal and calm yourself. 
Wu Lei's whereabouts are still unknown, and they've even taken Mr. Zhao Cho hostage. The longer we wait, the more complicated the situation becomes. Zhao Cho always said I'm the most impatient person among the Cloud Knights, and I can't argue with that. So, there's no reason for you to be more anxious than me. I've fought against Boris and abominations for years, and I know their ferocity and cunning well. The Borsen were clearly well prepared for this prison break, and now they are staying in the shadows. They have no reason to rush out into the open. When facing cunning and ferocious prey, the hunter must be more patient, biding their time to seize the golden chance for a decisive blow. Once Hule loses his patience and reveals himself, that's when we'll strike. But when will that time come? Like I said, it's only one meal away. General Hua Yan, the Skyfaring Commission has finished its preparations. Do you have any other instructions? Representing the consensus between the Merlin's Claw and the Divine Foresight, I'll step in as the temporary commanding officer of the seat of Divine Foresight and oversee the Six Commission's affairs on the Law Fu. What is the situation at the Shackling Prison? Hule made a quick escape and even sealed the gates of the prison. As of now, the Cloud Knights have re-established contact with the staff inside. The good news is the two nameless who were trapped in the Shackling prison are safe and sound. <sighs> um, I know I shouldn't use the word great given the current situation, but I'm relieved that he and Don Hung are safe. <sighs> We've lost contact with one of the messengers from the Xianzhou Yaoqing. The Borisin have likely taken him hostage. Don't worry, Yuko. Fei Shao is leading the wolf hunt operation, and you know how capable she is. I have no doubt about General Fei Shao's capabilities, General Hua Yan. I'm more concerned about the Wardens. According to the plan, the ceremony will begin in six hours. The Sky Splitter will be activated, and all visitors will board the ship to watch the contest. But now, with Hu Lei's whereabouts unknown, Everything is filled with uncertainty. Arch is right, Grandpa. I heard the escape prisoner from the Shackling prison is beyond formidable. In case anything goes wrong. So, Yun Li, what do you think we should do? Well, hmm. I believe we should declare martial law and allocate manpower to search for the escape prisoners. And as for the war dance, it's better to announce an indefinite delay for now. <sighs> Your plan sounds solid, but unfortunately solid plans rarely get a chance to be implemented. I believe there are at least two parties who won't accept your approach. The first are the many travelers who have come all the way here for the war dance. If we declare martial law now, it's like declaring that the law foo isn't safe. How do you think the outsiders would react? They'd be terrified, and chaos might ensue. The second party is the staff of the Xianzhou Law Fu's six commissions. They've invested a lot of resources and manpower into organizing the war dance. Suddenly suspending it indefinitely would create numerous challenges for them. But of course, not everyone disagrees with your idea. Uh, really? The mastermind behind this incident would fully support your opinion, presumably. Hule's escape and your discovery of Boris and spies at Stargazer Navalia. Hmm. Even a child could guess that these events were orchestrated. The fugitive is just one piece in the game. The one controlling the pieces wants to spread chaos and suspicion among the people on the Law Fu. 
If we declare martial law and postpone the war dance, we'll fall into their trap and instill fear in people even before Hule actually does anything. So what do we do? We'll search for the prisoners while maintaining order on the law who, acting as if nothing has happened. As if nothing has happened? Uh, Yen Ching said he'd assist the generals, and now he's nowhere to be found. <laughs> With the host ringmaster gone, how are we supposed to act like nothing has happened? That's why I called the two of you here. General Huayan asking you to be the ringmaster instead of Yen Ching? No, that's not the case. General Huayan, are you asking me to take Yen Ching's place as the ringmaster? You caught on quickly, Miss March. That's exactly what I mean. But Miss March is a guest invited by General Jing Yuan, Grandpa. How can an outsider represent the Lawfu in the ring? It will make the Sienjo Lawfu a laughingstock. Dear child, the nameless of the Astral Express are renowned throughout the cosmos. It's an honor to have them participate in the ceremony. Plus, Miss March is a disciple of the little Cloud Knight Lieutenant. How can she be regarded as an outsider? We can't afford to have any problems during the war dance. I'm entrusting you not only with the honor of the ring, but also with the security of the Sky Splitter. Yu Kong, please explain to them the rest of the arrangements. I'm sorry for our improper management, and I truly appreciate your assistance, General. There is no need to apologize. We Cloud Knights fight on the battlefield while you judges punish the criminals. We are two sides of the same Sienjo Lo Fu, and it is my honor to serve the Ten Lords Commission. I've grasped the situation of the prison break. Now tell me more about the current state of the Shackling prison. Borison infiltrated the prison in disguise and released the prisoners, spreading chaos. Among the judges on duty in the four divisions, Judge Shui from the detention division was killed and is temporarily unavailable. So, I'm taking over her duties and commanding Arumaton spectral envoys and spiritfarers to quickly restore order in the affected areas. I and the two behind me? We'll go deeper into the prison to investigate. But, General, the situation inside is still chaotic and perilous. Your presence would be... It's common for Cloud Knight Generals to face danger directly. Hule has escaped, and the Yao Qing envoy is being held hostage by the Borison. His fate is unknown. This is a grave matter. Not only did the Merlin's Claw offer no reproach, she decided to go after Hule herself to prevent further calamity. I believe the Law Fu owes her something in return for her fervent determination. Hmm. How did the infiltrators learn about the location where Hule was held? And how did they time their plan just before the Yao Qing messengers were ready to escort him? Finding the answer to these questions shouldn't be too difficult. What truly matters is if we can gather the clues that lead us to the mastermind behind all of this. I understand, but I'm afraid it won't be an easy task. For a long time, this hidden force has been pursuing their own goals and undermining the security of the Law Fu. Backing down now will only encourage them to further endanger the peace here. The Ten Lords Commission will support your decision with everything we have, General. Dan Hong and Ling Sha, 
I'll need both of you to accompany me on this challenging journey. Well, it's part of my responsibilities as the Cauldron Master. So, where would you like to start, General? Let's start with those Borisu disguised as Foxians. My people have already prepared the evidence. According to Lieutenant Yenching's report, he stumbled upon a few suspicious Foxians at Stargazer Navalia. After following them, he discovered that they were actually Borison in disguise. This is one of the bodies. <sighs> Looking at him now, it's hard to imagine how he transformed into a Foxian. My alchemist detected some... complex ingredients in his remains. Which might explain how these Borison were able to disguise themselves as Foxians. Simply put, Foxians and Borison share a common ancestry. Although they look completely different now, there isn't much genetic difference between them. This medicine allows Borison to temporarily change their shape into that of Foxians. So, in other words, if they stop taking the medicine, their true form will soon be revealed? Indeed. This means that these Borison have a steady supply of the medicine within the Lafu. <sighs> the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus. Looks like the Alchemy Commission is involved once again. Hmm. When I was sorting through the prescriptions they used, I came across one called Semblance Reversion Essence. It's designed to help those Disciples suppress signs of their Marastruck forms and maintain their normal appearance. When I compared it to the medicine found in the Borson's body... They're one and the same, aren't they? The medicinal properties and ingredients may differ, but the principle remains the same. Since ancient times, the Borison have always sought to have more powerful bodies, regarding the Foxians as weaklings. Yet, in order to save their warhead, they were willing to disguise themselves as Foxians. <laughs> Their determination is quite remarkable. If these infiltrators rely on the medicine to maintain their disguise, then following this lead in our investigation seems prudent. Please follow me. According to the judge, this area is not yet under control, so we should proceed cautiously. I've captured the nature of the medicine in my sensor. By following the medicinal fumes, we should be able to retrace the steps of the disguised Borison. <gasps> Incredible strength! The attacker shattered this warden's bones with a single blow. Such brute strength is not something an ordinary Borison possesses. This is likely the work of Hulai. If I may be so bold to ask, is this Borison truly that formidable? I have lived a bit longer and engaged in a few more battles than you, Miss Lingshaw. To the Alliance, Borison have always been the most formidable adversaries. And Hulai is a monster feared even among his own kind. With his strength, Hula united numerous Borison packs, forming a grand army of abominations of abundance. They constantly pushed the Alliance's armies into perilous positions. Over seven centuries ago, I followed my mentor on a campaign against the abominations. And I personally witnessed the devastation on the battlefield after Hule appeared. Even with medicinal pellets that suppress the fear caused by his lupitoxin, countless cloud knights succumbed to panic in the face of his murderous aura. They couldn't even raise a hand in resistance. If the former sword champion hadn't immobilized Hule with her frost blade, the outcome of that fateful battle could have been very different. By the end of the battle, only a few of us remain. 
The crimson moon cast the sheen of blood on all. Everything I saw was painted dark red. If that's the case, why wasn't the beast executed instead of being imprisoned? <sighs> on the Sienjo Jumi, the judges cast those unforgivable and nearly immortal abominations of abundance into the eternal flames of the stars, reducing them to ashes. Their so-called immortality is just a facade. I mean, nothing can truly defy death, can it? I just don't understand why the Lafu kept this tumor for so long, leading to the terrible situation we're facing now. But I guess I understand. The people of the Lafu are known for their kindness. Even when faced with a malignant tumor within the Alchemy Commission, they couldn't bring themselves to cut it out. Instead, they exiled the healer, who tried to solve the problem, to the Sienjo Jun. I understand if you hold grudges against me, Miss Lingshaw. I take the blame for the resurgence of the disciples of Sanctus Medicus. As for why Hule was only in prison, I can shed some light on that too. I'm just a healer. I'm not familiar with the past. I'd appreciate it if you could enlighten me, General. All right. Let me tell you more about it as we go. Did this Cloud Knight also take the medicine? No. This is a Borison in disguise. A guard killed him before he could return to his original form. All these Borison are dressed in official attire. Besides the Cloud Knight, there were also two Borison disguised as members of the Skyframe Commission and the Artisanship Commission. Hmm. Whoever is providing them with official identities must hold the position of power. Let's search elsewhere. Someone bit open his arteries and drained almost all of his blood while he was still alive. <sighs> Such a cruel and ruthless act. Despite being a long-lived species, Borson are actually more like predatory beasts that must feed on raw blood and flesh. I've heard that Hule was deprived of food and water in the Shackling prison. It's hard to imagine how he managed to suppress his hunger for over seven centuries. Will the hostage from the Yaoqing be able to avoid being his meal? Such is the terrible nature of the abominations of abundance. We subjected him to the forest of swords to drain his life force. But in the end, his punishment turned into a test of our patience. Just like you said, Miss Lingshan. Casting a creature that can't be killed into a star would be a way to permanently get rid of it. But unfortunately... The Foxians didn't agree to that. Exactly. The atrocities committed by Hule went beyond mere massacres. Throughout numerous wars, we made every effort to eradicate the Borison. But Hule, with his mysterious sorcery, turned countless Foxians into his pawns. So the Borison kept returning. The Foxians curse his name day and night, and they even use it to scare children into staying quiet. How could they grant a swift death to such a great sinner? I wonder if you know why Hule wasn't taken into custody by the Foxian majority Sienjo Yaoqing, but instead imprisoned in the Sienjo Luofu, Miss Lin Cha. As you mentioned, your mentor was an exceptional warrior and was the one who defeated Hulei, an extraordinary achievement. Therefore, the Marshal placed this feral beast under the jurisdiction of the Sienjo Lafu as an honor, I assume? It seems you have a major misunderstanding about this arrangement, Miss Lin Cha. Allow me to explain it to you.
Yen Ching told me that an IPC ship was attacked by Borisin. Is this what they were transporting on the ship? Yes. The Artisanship Commission and Alchemy Commission conducted a joint examination and found that... the parts of this machine are made from specially refined Borisin bio-tissue. I heard the Intelligentsia Guild has been researching the biological properties of long-life species, hoping to make medical or combat-related discoveries. However, they haven't dared to cross any lines due to their so-called relationship with the Alliance. Perhaps to those scholars, Borisin are no different from lab animals. <sighs> Maybe the Borisin attacked that ship to retaliate against the Intelligentsia Guild for... experimenting on them? No. If it were only about revenge, they could just wreck the ship and destroy all the cargo, instead of allowing it to end up in the Shackling Prison. It was a deliberate display to showcase the dangerous nature of the cargo in broad daylight. This way, the cargo would end up in the Shackling Prison, serving as a tool for the prison break. This skill in exploiting the blind spots of others' mindsets is so atypical of them. Hmm. I'm afraid the IPC and the Intelligentsia Guild unknowingly became their accomplices. Watch out! This thing is still alive! And even after suffering such severe attacks? Their imitation of long-life species has crossed the line. I haven't answered my question about why Hu Lei was imprisoned in the La Fu instead of the Yao Qing general. You've been reserved in your response. Could it be that such an arrangement wasn't an honor? The reason why the Marshal didn't leave Hu Lei on the Yao Qing lies in the very mech in front of us. Are you suggesting that there are people trying to understand Hu Lei's secrets and use them for their own purposes? Just like with this mech? <sighs> well, I understand. I've heard that the Foxians on the Yaoqing share a bloodline with the Borisin. And just like the Borisin, some of the Foxians there experience an uncontrollable insanity called Moon Rage. The Marshal believed that this would be inhumane and no different from what the Borisin did, so... Exactly. While Borisin see Moon Rage as a blessing that unlocks their true potential, Foxians see it as an inevitable curse within their bloodline. Countless healers of the Yao Qing have attempted to unravel this mystery, but to no avail. Why can Borisin control the power of Moon Rage? Can we Foxians break free from this curse? These questions were asked frequently. Each questioner had good intentions. <sighs> but the road to catastrophe is paved with good intentions. To the Foxians of the Yao Qing, Hu Lei was not only the warhead of the Borisin, but also a monster that could be the subject of much research. Hu Lei thus became a poison that corrupted people's minds without their knowing. That's why the Marshal decided to imprison Hu Lei and the La Fu. It wasn't an honor, but rather a warning. Because such selfish pursuits in the name of good intentions once led to a tragedy on the La Fu that served as a warning to future generations. The sedition of Imbibitor Lune. <laughs> By imprisoning Hu Lei and the Xianzhou La Fu, the Marshal both suppressed the dangerous intentions of the Yaoqing Foxians and warned the Xianzhou La Fu to refrain from repeating its mistake. That was a necessary trade-off. 
The Sienjo Alliance is not solely about the Sienjo natives. Only when all three races, Foxian, Vidyagora, and Sienjo natives, form an alliance, will there be a promising future for all. Thank you for enlightening me. Was it for the same reason that you traded off my mentor to the Sienjo Juming, only to stand idle and allow the resurgence of the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus? You said that I couldn't bear to cut out the malignant tumor within the Alchemy Commission, but instead exiled the healer who tried to solve the problem to the Sienjo Juming. But did your mentor tell you her good intentions led her to perform certain healing arts on Dun Hung, who had just finished his hatching rebirth, <sighs> so that he would regain the memories of his past life? What, what did, you did you just say? say? She believed that restoring the High Elder's knowledge of his past life would allow the Vidyadara to resume their duty as the guardians of the Ambrosial Arbor, quelling the strife within their clan and bringing everything back on the right path. But just as I mentioned earlier, the road to catastrophe is always paved with good intentions. Since then, the Six Charioteers decided that the Alchemy Commission would no longer have a Cauldron Master. Until your arrival now. Uh, if that's the case, I should thank you for protecting my mentor by exiling her, General. Quite the contrary. I should be the one thanking you. Thanking me? All I ever want is to have a clear conscience. However, can long life species truly achieve that goal in their long drawn lives? For example, you were implicated along with your mentor and forced to leave your homeland without knowing the truth. And now, with the complicated situation in the Alchemy Commission, the Alliance has spared me a lot of trouble by sending you to handle this challenging task. Shouldn't I be thanking you instead? Your eloquence is indeed impressive, the Divine Foresight. He won't even leave me any excuses to hold a grudge against you. But, let me make it clear. The Alliance sent me here to handle the business impartially, not to choose sides. It doesn't matter which side you choose, Miss Lingshaw. At the end of the day, both you and I stand on the side of the Alliance, don't we? <laughs> Let's keep going. These Mara-struck soldiers don't appear to be escaped prisoners. How can you tell? These soldiers are fully armed. Obviously, they didn't hastily join the battle. The messenger named Morza did say that there were two groups of attackers. And the other attackers, aside from the Borson, could hide their tracks. <laughs> I believe he was referring to these people. Hide their tracks? <laughs> exactly. I've engaged with these attackers before and they used cloud hymn magic to hide their presence. Without careful observation, no one can detect them. You once warned me to be cautious of the Vidyadara Elder's influence within the Alchemy Commission. Could it be? What's on your mind, Miss Lingshaw? Well, it seems that someone provided the attackers with a map of the Shackling Prison. And considering the Vidyadara's involvement in the prison's construction, it raises suspicion about their role in this. Additionally, the fact that the Borison need medicine to disguise themselves would suggest that there are still moles within the Alchemy Commission assisting them covertly. Moreover, forging official identities for the undercover Borison would require someone with significant authority. And the presence of assassins capable of using cloud him magic deepens my suspicion about the preceptors. But why would the Vidyadara collude with the Borisin and Aiden who lays escape? They aim to spread chaos. 
They believe that only in chaos can they regain their former power and influence. Since this edition of Imbiber de Lune, the once proud dragon race has been powerless, watching their influence wane. Being a native of the Lo Fu, Miss Ling Sha, I believe you understand the implications. However, I don't think the preceptors are the true mastermind. If I'm not mistaken, the one behind all this treachery is the Lord Ravager who exploited the weaknesses within the Law Fu and instigated the disciples of Sanctus Medicus, ultimately leading to the Ambrosial Arbor's resurrection. Fentilia. Please remember, General, that everything I've mentioned is mere speculation. We need concrete evidence for a public trial. If you want to interrogate someone within the Vidyadara's ranks, you'll need irrefutable proof. So, what's your plan, Miss Lingsha? I'll send an invitation to the preceptors. An invitation? The preceptors have been inviting me for a personal meeting since my arrival on the Lafu. Now, I'll send them the remains of these Mara-struck soldiers and the route map I found in the prisoner's possession. Then, I'll ask them to meet me at Scale Gorge Waterscape. I'd like to hear their explanations. Good idea. If I were to take action, it might alert the true mastermind. I trust you to handle this matter, Miss Lingsha. The internal affairs of the Vidyadara should remain under their jurisdiction. And don't worry if things don't go smoothly. Once the wolf hunt operation is over, the hidden truths will come to light. Speaking of the wolf hunt operation, I'm truly worried about the Yaoqing messenger who was taken hostage. Hule was starving in the shackling prison for centuries. I don't know if the messenger can survive in that wolf's clutches. May Rainbow's blessing keep him safe.